So today we have come to Underwood Family Farms which is basically a huge big pumpkin patch that rocks up every October and uh, we're here to get some pumpkins but we're also to soak up some Halloween fun. What? 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 Do you want to go on that slide? He's just spotted a slide so that's exactly where we're going to go but uh, we have to go on the tractor first so let's go! You're getting me confused with the camera on me. Uh -huh. right, one, three. We're gonna shout Yeehaw! 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 Woo! So uh, we have just got on the first part of the pumpkin patch, which is a little bit of a tractor ride around the farm. Um, as you can see, look at this. Like, I've never seen as many pumpkins in a field as this ever. No, it's kind of mesmerized. I smell a bit of weed. <laughs> so we're off to a really relaxing start. She drives like purple. There, we go get the fire of the bird. So we just come off the tractor ride and our next stop is to the corn maze um, which I've always heard of in books and things like that but I've never actually been to one. So Noah, are you ready for your first corn maze? Mama, Mama are you ready for one? Yes. <laughs> Sophie's heavily pregnant at this point and this is exactly what you want to be doing, right? And it's roasting. <laughs> I've just come back from Dublin so I feel like I'm still in like Dublin temperatures but it's absolutely roasting. Right, are you ready? Let's go! Whoa! Turns out that uh, corn mazes are actually a uh, big part of Noah's favourite game, which is hide and seek. And uh, we're having a lot of fun right there. There she is. <laughs> Where's Noah? There he is! <laughs> I think we have uh, run into a little bit of a problem in the fact that we have genuinely got lost. Um, yay! Come on! We'll hopefully get you out of here before lunch. Yeah, at dinner time Jack climbed up the corn stalk for a third time. This time, however, the tall woman did not feed him. Instead, she ate him alive. Most likely one of the most American experiences I've ever had. Uh, we did not have pumpkin patches when I was growing up, so it's a cool thing to come. And Noah is having an absolute ball. We've been to the petting zoo, we've done the corn maze, uh, we have a few pumpkins we've picked, but we need to pick some more. And uh, he's kind of losing the will to live a little bit because he's getting really tired. He's had a great time, but it's nearing nap time. So we're gonna head back and we're gonna make some really delicious pumpkin risotto. It's uh, the sort of thing I love to cook around this time of year, except it's not normally ridiculously hot. But either way, it's perfect autumn food. Let's get home and let's get. Cook it. Okay. 
Right, a visit to a pumpkin patch would not be complete without some sort of warm and comforting dinner after you've been out in the madness of all of that. And I do have one that I make all the time, especially when it comes to Halloween. This is a pumpkin and sage prosciutto risotto. Uh, it's kind of inspired by the flavors of saltimbocca, but it has all that warm, creamy richness that risotto always gives. If you can learn how to make risotto, it is one of those classic kitchen recipes that can be adapted with whatever ingredients you have. You can do it with mushrooms, you can do it with a whole host of different ingredients, but particularly works well around this time of the year with butternut squash or pumpkin. So it's a really good one to learn. Uh, we have some arborio rice and I'm gonna just grab up our prosciutto as well. Um, essentially what I wanna do is roast off the pumpkins and I got one or two of the pumpkins. They had a huge array of different varieties. And um, this one I've been told is really nice and sweet and will bake off quite nicely. So we do need a bit of work to do on this. They are the only thing I dislike about pumpkins, even though I love every other aspect of them, is they're a bit cumbersome to actually take apart. So you have to peel them. They're a bit kind of uh, tough with the knife, but take your time with this, prepare it by peeling it, scooping out the seeds, and you should be left with some really gorgeous orange flesh. So let's get chopping. Now I am scraping these pumpkin seeds into a bowl. And the reason for that is because when we were kids, one of my favorite things to do was to clean off all these seeds. They actually break off quite nicely and then you wash them and then you lay them out on a roasting tray and you can just season them with salt and pepper, a little bit of oil, and they toast up gorgeously. They instantly remind me of the snack we used to have after we'd carved some pumpkins um, and it was something we did with my mom every year. So very, very kind of nostalgic and great memories from that. So I always keep the pumpkin seeds for later. Um, as for the pumpkin flesh itself, this is where we're gonna treat it a little bit differently. We're gonna slice it into kind of quarters and then, uh, and then kind of into eighths because I want nice big kind of chunky bits of pumpkin that are gonna hold their shape as we roast them off in the oven. Basically, what you want to leave yourself with is as much kind of surface space that's gonna catch and caramelize in the oven. Pumpkins tend to be quite sweet. So what you're trying to do in the oven is to caramelize the sugars and really make them super sweet. So they're the perfect topping to your risotto. So into nice little slices, and then we're gonna roast these off for about 40 minutes in the oven. Once you've done all the hard work, all you've got to do is drizzle these with a bit of oil and sea salt and black pepper. And like any veggie, they come out of the oven after about 40 minutes with so much more flavor than they went in with. So these are going to go in and while they're in, we can make up the risotto. Now risotto is one of my favorite things to cook because it's just so simple and it's the alchemy of just a few ingredients to create something that's truly special and that's absolutely a treat for dinner time. So we're going to start off like any good risotto with the onion. The onion is really important here. We're going to finely chop it and then we're gonna sweat it down just until it's nice and tender. And I mean, sometimes it's, it's fine to skip through the cooking of your onion, but in this case where you really wanna eke out as much flavor from that onion as possible, we're gonna finely chop it, let it sweat down and give it the time it needs, which is about eight to 10 minutes just until we get really sweet and flavorful onions, which is the start and the base flavor for this entire risotto. So let's give these a nice fine chop. Onion is in and at this point now, I've started on a high heat and then reduced it right down to a medium because you want it to kind of catch and then for it to reduce out and cook out. Uh, while it's cooking away, let's get some garlic on. So I'm only gonna add about a clove or two here. I just want that kind of subtle hit of garlic. You don't want it to overpower the dish here. So best way with your garlic, grab your sharp knife and take the ends off it like this. Smash it with the back of the hand and then you're gonna get that skin off really easily. So just a nice fine chop on this is all you're looking for. So at this point now, as the onion kind of sweats out, it's time to kind of prepare all the other ingredients that are gonna go into your risotto. We've got some butter. Um, I've also got some of the arborio rice. This is like a short grain white rice and it basically gives you this lovely creamy starchiness that you get from risotto, so don't skimp on the arborio rice. We also need a little bit of chicken stock. So I have um, some chicken stock that we're gonna put in here, but 
What I would suggest you do when you make your risotto is make sure that you have a pot of the chicken stock on the back of your boiler. So this makes sure that when you add the liquid, which is what we're gonna need to do in order to make this risotto, it's always staying warm so you're not slowing down the cooking process. You're keeping it at the same temperature that's in this pan, that's in this pan. So really the idea of this is to not to slow down the cooking process of your risotto. What you're allowing to do by adding the boiling water means that the temperature doesn't come down in the pan and you can keep things rocking through. Now while the onion's cooking down, just hit it with a little pinch of salt and pepper. I always think the salt at this point of the onion cooking out always kind of draws out the moisture and intensifies the sweetness of the flavor. Uh, a little bit of black pepper, not too much going in here. And just let that continue to sweat down. So it's starting to come together and this is where I'm talking about you need to take your time with the onions because like I said, this is the base flavor of this risotto. So if you don't kind of give it the time, you're not going to get the best results in this risotto and there's not too many other ingredients. So stick with the time it takes to cook out that onion. Okay, this is where we need to be with the onions. Come in and have a look at this because at this moment in time, we have really tender and sweet onions. And to this, with the heat back up, we're gonna grab up the garlic, which I prepared. And all I wanna do is get that kind of in there and get the heat on it. You just wanna cook it out for no more than about like 10, 15 seconds, just to take the bite out of the garlic. And once it's at this point now, grab up that arborio rice, which we have ready to rock. And this is the sort of thing like where I like to do it by eye. So we're gonna go, about half the packet going in here and we should get left with a serious amount. Ah, do you know what? I'm putting it all in. <laughs> we'll put the whole pack in and I have a, quite a lot of chicken stock so I'm just going to cook it out. The great thing about risotto is that it heats up beautifully. You can also use cold risotto to make up beautiful little arancini, those gorgeous risotto balls. Uh, so there's plenty of uses for it and it actually freezes quite well as well. Now I've given it a minute in the pan just to take on a bit of heat. Like any sort of grain that's been sitting in the store cupboard, you want to waken it up. You want to make sure that it, the heat hits it and it brings it alive. So once it's toasted a little bit, it'll add to the flavor. We're going to get straight in there with some dry white wine. Now, do make sure you use dry white wine. You do not want a sweet wine here. You want something that's going to give you a bit of bite. So straight in there. And you're looking for about a glass of white wine goes in. Give that a little stir. Give that a little sizzle. Now, what the white wine gives you is not only flavor, but when you add it to the pan like this, it actually deglazes the pan. So any of that sort of flavor that the onion has placed on the bottom of the pan, it brings it into the rice, it brings it involved into the liquid and ultimately flavors up the risotto. So at this point now, you're gonna notice, come in and have a look at this, because this is what you're looking for. The little liquid here that's in the rice, you're gonna notice that this thickens up. And when it starts to thicken, that's when you know it's time to add in more stock. So we have our chicken stock on the side here. And all you wanna do, is keep a ladle in it, and every time it starts to thicken up or it starts to absorb that liquid, we're gonna add another spoonful of that chicken stock straight in. You wanna keep your eye so that it doesn't absorb too much water, and at the point it does, you add more, and you keep it moving until you cook out that risotto rice. It'll plump up. You should have it still to the point that it's al dente, but ultimately, with all the stirring we're gonna do and all that absorption, you're gonna be left with a really creamy and gorgeous risotto. So keep your eye on it, keep it moving, and we need to look after this pumpkin next. Right, I need to grab up the pumpkin from the oven and it should, oh yeah, now we're in business. Oh, that looks fantastic. This is exactly what you're looking for, that nice little bit of chard around the edges, but it should be nice and fork tender. You can kind of touch it and feel that it's in a good place. So I have some slices of prosciutto, I have some sage, and we're just gonna drape that on top, pop it back in the oven, and as soon as the prosciutto is crisp and those little sage leaves have taken on a bit of crispiness too, we're gonna serve it all up with that gorgeous creamy risotto and be left with something that's perfect for autumn. Right, let's get prosciuttoing. So, straight into the oven, leave this, it only needs like five minutes or so, depending on how hot your oven is, just until the prosciutto crisps up and make sure that you don't burn your sage. So straight back in. This is where you want to be. Your rice is completely plumped up and you should notice that the grains become kind of less translucent and much more plump and white. So I always think the way to know your risotto is done is take up a little spoonful and it's all about the texture between your teeth. So mm. this is exactly where it needs to be. It's still got a tiny, tiny sliver of a bite to it, but it's nice and fluffy on the outside. So at this point now, turn off the heat. The majority of this is now done. So in here with 
plenty of Parmesan cheese, really good salty bite here. This will actually help to season. I always add the Parmesan first and then check the seasoning after it because it can be a bit salty. And then because I really want a creamy finish on this with a generous bit of butter and then just give that all a good stir through. You want the butter to melt through and then you want that cheese to be fully incorporated. Right, this is in a good place now and we want to infuse it with all that pumpkin action. So I have taken up a few slices of that pumpkin that's really sweet and caramelized. And all I'm going to do with the back of a fork is just mash it up so that we get nice little spiky bits of orange throughout this lovely risotto. Just that little bit will infuse this risotto and then we'll serve it up with the rest on top. And that's it. All you're gonna do is finish this with some olive oil, pop on that pumpkin on the top, the prosciutto, the sage, and you've got a gorgeous risotto. Right, uh, we've just played it up and I have a little helper. Do you want to come in? Do you want to come up and try some? Who's just about to go off for his nap, so he's a bit grumpy. But do you want to try some of this and see what it tastes like? You take that? This is the important taste test that you do to make sure that uh, it actually gets the seal of approval. I've just finished it off with a little bit of the prosciutto and the pumpkin and of course those crispy sage leaves. Are you going to try some? You try some. Oh, so good. It's got all those flavors of salt and bucket, that sage and the prosciutto. I always go on about the different oils you use when you're cooking and extra virgin olive oil. This is like the best stuff I have. I always think it's a nice way to finish off a risotto. You really want that kind of peppery bite. So I've just added a little drizzle of that. Are you going to try some and tell me what you think? Can I try? No. no. Papa eat it? Yeah. Mm. Will Noah eat it? No. No? No. A little bit. No. Is it good? Is it nice? <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> I think we've got the seal of approval. Um, guys, a really simple risotto recipe. It's from my kitchen to yours. I hope you give it a go. And you can leave us a comment letting us know if you're gonna try this. Uh, clearly, it's got the seal of approval. Do you like it? He's going back for more, that's always a good sign. Uh, guys, we'll sign off here, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>